with a bucket of fucking sand. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm just in here doing it. Oh, oh God. Oh. Oh, that's awesome oh, oh no. my god i know i'm, I, I, I'm that guy <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's it's so great to have uh you darren and and dusty too two iconic uh people in each respective sports golf and uh-huh. and uh and fishing um and well i'm gonna go back just a hair i mean i met you darren a couple of years ago yes. playing in a pro-am yeah yeah and after the, about the third or fourth hole i said what do you like besides winning golf tournaments yeah. and you looked at me and said I fucking love catching big oh, permit, yeah. oh, you know? Yeah. Oh. And then uh, the rest of the day, it was all about fishing. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you asked me, you said, what do you like? I said, well, I'm kind of a, a tarpon guy. And then you, all of a sudden, your head snapped around. Your yeah, eyes yeah, got yeah, big. Yeah, and yeah, you, you go, I fucking know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I thought you were a rock star. You look like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> you look like somebody had an Iron Maiden or something. Oh, he does, yeah, And he I'm does. looking at because, you know, we play pro-ams every week. Sure. And, you know, we play different guys and... I'm on the first day and I look at the guy and say, I know, I know, I know, I know that guy. Because I don't get the card, but Caddy always takes the card. Right. And I go, I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that guy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, as the you bell said, went off. The bell went off. And the rest and of the day. The rest of, I had no interest. To, yeah, you couldn't ask me anything about golf because I had no interest. I've got Andy Mill with me. All I can <laughs> oh, say is just, I want to ask him all sorts of questions. <laughs> well, you know what's, but, but you know what's so great is that you're a big uh, permit guy. Yeah. And yeah. uh, and Dustin is the king of yeah. everything in the Laura Keys. Yeah. And yeah. so when I asked you to come on the podcast, you asked about Dustin. Yes. So I said, Dustin, exactly. Darren hey, asked about you. <laughs> exactly. He said, crazy. He said, get the hell out of here. He yeah. asked me in my name. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I said. Go. I said, we're we're in your what? world. We're in your world right now, as I just said. There, you know, we're talking about all this, and I'm going to pick your brains and ask all well, these you know, questions. But we're going to my world afterwards. Yeah, whenever we're going to sure. have a bit of golf. I mean, what a great day! We got to yeah. you know come here, and then we're going to go play golf. But before we get into the fishing, if mm-hmm. you don't mind, I'd yeah. like to I'd like to talk a, li- a little bit. Both of us would about your golf uh, life mm-hmm. because. Mm-hmm. Not only you've been so successful, but your presence and and your humility mm-hmm. and and your generosity and your love, you always have had this great smile. I think you're beloved around the world, possibly yeah. more than any other player that I know of. Yeah, I've been very fortunate in that way, Andy. You know, golf is you know you both you, you play the game. Golf is a is a very humbling sort of game, isn't it? You I mean it can you can go from the very top one day down to the bottom the next, even for the greatest players. You know, and it's it's a hard sport, and shit, I take it hard when I play it poorly. I really do. That's part of what we do. Well, I go I, I go through the period of right. Well, I'm pissed off about. It, I'm really fed up, and then I get to the point of well, what could I have done better? But like you guys, you know, in the fish, what could mm-hmm. I have done better? Right. And I um, analyze it, and I go into that, and I try to do it. But I've always tried to listen. I've had my bad times with the press and the media and stuff when I've come off and my head's been off. I've played shit, or I've bogeyed the last, or double the last, or whatever. But it, I guess as you get older, you mellow a little bit, and you try and learn. But I've always tried to realize underneath it all how lucky I am to be going around the world playing on some of the best golf, golf courses in the world, some of the most beautiful places in the world, doing a, playing a sport for a living that I love. And sometimes I haven't really seen that, but then the other times whenever I do, I, I try and enjoy it. You know, I, I used to come over here and play. I was fortunate. I've played all over the world and I'm going all over the world. But um, to come and play in America um, in the early years, before really there was that many Europeans over playing over here, and um, I just got on. The crowds have always been very kind to me over here. I always have been on the PGA Tour in America. And, you know, I go and play at places like Hilton Head, which I used to love that. Um, there's a place called the Lighthouse there, which was the bar. Probably they may have liked me there because I spent most of my evening time in the Lighthouse bar <laughs> there during the tournament. But they've thrown beers at me and cigars and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's just, just brilliant. But I loved it. But I've been fortunate. M- most places I've gone to play, you know, the people have... Um, warm to me and, and that's always made made it a lot easier right well you've got uh some great success and i think one of the uh there's two that really stand out mm-hmm. um or actually maybe three in the fact that you won the open in, mm-hmm. in 05 you beat mm-hmm. tiger four and three in mm-hmm. the world golf championships mm-hmm. in 03 mm-hmm. and the great wins that you had at the Ryder cup mm-hmm. right shortly after your pet your wife mm-hmm. passed mm-hmm. I mean, those are those are really significant yeah. wins. Yeah. And but, uh, let's go to your wife and, and yes. her passing, Heather. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how was such distress that you had? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can only imagine losing your spouse and then playing in such a. You were yeah. a captain's pick yeah. by Ian Wooster, yeah. yeah. and then you won th- uh, three in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. How did you do that? 
<laughs> Fuck knows. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. Um, it was it was obviously a very difficult uh, period in my life, and um, you know, Heather was diagnosed with cancer two years prior to that, and then it came back again, and um, four years prior to that, and then it came back a secondary breast cancer, and the diagnosis got worse and worse and worse, uh, and she battled and she battled and she battled, but you know, it was it was anybody that's been through the cancer thing they know it moves from one part of the body to the other part of the body and um you know a couple of days before she eventually succumbed to to the breast cancer um she said to me if ian was not asked you to play for um the red cup team i want you to play and this was six weeks ahead of when she was you know a couple of days before she passed away and it was one of those you, you know it sort of that was Heather. She was, was she was a lady who was never about herself. She was always everything. Uh, you've got to go do this because, as a professional, but, but Rich called myself an athlete. But as a professional sports person, you know, we, we you got to be a little bit mad to be able to live the lifestyle and do what you do because you're traveling all the time. I'm away from the kids. She brought my kids up. Um, she did everything, and 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 Heather was. She was a, a very kind woman with her time towards everybody else. And uh, she put everybody ahead of herself. And, um, you know, she as long as she thought my boys were going to be okay, and um, she said, go and play. And um, you know, as things transpired, obviously, she passed away. And um, Woozy called me a couple of weeks later and said, Darren, do you want to be part of the team? And I said... I would love to be was he and I will do my utmost and I spent those next four weeks because after that I sort of put my golf in a hole a little bit because I had to be at home and look after my two boys Tyrone and Connor they were five and seven at the time mm. and I didn't want to be away and I had to look after them so um I was at home which was different for me, but I was still up practicing at a place called Queenwood which I remember of which was about a mile away from the home from home in London and I was practicing every day trying to get myself ready but you know, at, at the same time, whenever we did get to the Ryder Cup in the K Club, and um, it was at home in Ireland, and obviously from being there and stuff, I stood in that first tee uh, on the Friday morning in a Ryder Cup. And if, if, if there is nothing else like it, there's just in our sport, there is nothing else like it. It's like, you know, you boys, you're going for a gold cup, you're doing whatever, and you've got a big fish, and, and time's running out, and you've got a shot, you're going to have one shot of this fish. That's a bit of pressure for you, isn't it? That's mm, yeah. Ryder Cups are Gold Cup. It's like you just you have to perform. And I stood in that first day. I had no idea if I was going to miss the ball, top the ball, snap hook it, just whatever. And I just, uh, I don't know how, but I had a 320 down the middle. I had a wedge onto the green, spun it back at 15 feet and hold the butt for birdie. And uh, it's a Ryder Cup. Wow. I don't, I, just, I have no idea. But it's amazing how, uh, and I have these conversations with other pro golfers periodically. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Horschel yes. and I were speaking last summer. I said uh, to him, you're going down the stretch. Mm -hmm. How do you find the composure to play your best when there's so much pressure? And he says, whoever wants to win the most pulls it off. But I disagree. I disagree. Fuck, because we all want to win yeah. hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you separate... You know the want and the and the composure to actually pull off a great putt, hit that shot you need to hit. Because you you get into the mindset where you don't care. The great ones don't care. Of okay. course they do. Of course they care. We all care about making that shot to a permit, making that shot towards the tarpon, making that golf shot down the stretch. But if you apportion too much pressure to too much importance to that shot, nine times out of ten you're going to mess it up. But I don't understand how the fuck you do that. It's the open. You win the open. You're walking down the 18th. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you were successful. Yeah. And 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 you pulled that off. I don't yeah. understand how you can not care. You know, that's a that, and that's a really good that's a really good question. I could, you know, I spent that week. Um, I have worked with many uh, sports psychologists over my career. I have destroyed quite a few. <laughs> and I, and I, I, a little bit mad that again. But I've en I enjoyed their company and I've learned a little bit from everybody. That particular week, the, the guy that I've worked most with is a guy called Dr. Bob Rotella. He's very famous sure. in, within the golf industry yeah. and a uh, wonderful man. And I've only got this way a few times in my career where I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't care where the ball went. I hit it, I found it, I hit it again. And I didn't care. 
and I didn't know what score I was shooting. I had no idea. I was just in the zone. You know that it, stupid old thing. But the also thing, the question is, is, this is after a number of years playing in yes. majors, yeah, and yeah. it's finally like exactly. I had my chances and messed them all up. Yeah. So now it's like maybe yeah, let's just, just go have fun. Yeah. I got no. It was. It was no. Fuck. I want to win. Shit. Everything I want to do, I want to win. But that's what. That's why I just said my previous day, and you don't care. Because I learned that I tried so hard before and put so much importance on it that I was getting in my own way. And Dr. Bob, before I went out, we worked that week and I played great. The, we were up in, um, where were we? Inver, uh, were we up in Inverness, uh, Castle Stewart the week before in the Scottish Open. I just, fuck, I ripped it. And um, played so well. Hit it brilliant from tee to green. Put it like a bit of a dick. Um, played poorly on Sunday from being in a chance to win. And then we were flying down from Inverness all the way down to Royal St. George's. And Matt Kutcher was on that flight. There was about, it was about 30 of us on the flight. Kutcher, Kutcher and his wife were on the flight. Well, I came in off the golf course, went into the players' lounge, started drinking and got absolutely hammered on the way down with Kutcher and his missus down to Royal St. George's. And I'd ripped it and I was so pissed off and shit. And I um, got to the house where I was staying and went out the next day. Couldn't be asked getting out of bed until about 12 o'clock, which is not me, because I thought, I'm not going up there to rip it on the range and miss every putt I look at. So I went and I had a couple of pots in the afternoon and whatever. I went out and played the next morning and played with Lee Westwood. We went out at 6 there in the morning. I was ripping it. Um, hit it under the green, pick it up because I was going to miss it. Were you hung over? Oh, yeah. Shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, How do you play good golf when you're hung over? Well, Fuck, I see three balls down there. Well, Aim for well, the middle I mean, one? Well, no, but it was just, it was easy. It just, it was, I was swinging nicely. And, right. So and then I go out and play on um, on the Wednesday morning. And uh, I'm playing with Rory McIlroy. So a pair of us go off. Rory came through my foundation as he was a young kid and all sorts of stuff back over in Ireland. But we go out and we tee off at about 6.30 in the morning before all the crowds get in. And we go out and play. And we play the first 11 holes. And we get on to the 12th tee. And Charles Warchell and Louis Eusthausen have jumped in off the 10th. The lazy fuckers couldn't be bothered getting out of bed. So they had started on the 10th tee, unlike ourselves. So we joined up with them. And me being uh, as smart as I am, decided, uh, right, Rory and I will play you two. Rory's ripping, he's my partner, I'm having him. <laughs> and uh, Louis and Charles, I mean, there's cobwebs in their wallet. They do not like getting cash out of their wallet. I mean, <laughs> things, yeah, there's, things, there's things growing in there. That's me. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> He's got a loose wallet. Maybe you guys could go large today on the golf course. I can't wait. I know where my money is. Nikki, who are you betting on? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... We play a couple of Rory goes birdie birdie or whatever. We're a couple of we're two up or whatever, and I'm walking off the tee, and my head's still up my ass a little bit because I'm not making any butts. And I'm ahead of the three youngsters. And I'm the obviously the older guy at 40, 41 I was, forty two. I can't remember, but anyway, I'm the older guy. So the three of them, the cheeky little, but uh, all shouted to me, "Where's your major?" Um, Clark is what they shouted at me. I call every one of them on Sunday night after I'd won the Open to make sure. I said, "No, I got this one. This, <laughs> yeah. this is all. This is all right now." But you know. The point that I was getting to is that Bob Rotella had me in a really good mindset that week where I didn't care. And, and how, do, how do I explain that? I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't apportion any importance to any particular shot. You know, on the Sunday, Phil was making a charge. I was in no rest. I didn't look at a leaderboard until I was walking off the 16th green. I didn't. I just had no idea how far ahead I was because I didn't. Of course I cared. But the mindset, well, it wasn't. That I didn't, and I walked to the first tee on the Sunday with whatever I had, a one or two shot lead, and I've left the putting green, and Dr. Bob was in the putting green, I said, you know, Doc, if I keep this attitude, I will win today. Whether or not I lift the trophy, I will have proved to myself that I've won. And that was a mindset that I got myself into that, wow. you know, it was weird. It was just a, just a... A lighter. Just, just on a level where... It was, I trusted myself. What do we do a lot of times? We, we sort of tend to human nature to doubt yourself at times, mm -hmm. isn't it? You talk yourself up, you talk yourself. Billy, maybe that works for Billy. You know, the best player, the best one is going to win. Not necessarily. Right. The ones that sometimes try a little bit less. If you get into autopilot, who's going to tell you guys to throw a whatever, 80-foot back cast to a laid up fish over there with the wind coming the wrong direction. You don't stand there and think about what you're doing. No, you just do it. You just do, just it, do yeah. it. It's the same. Sometimes in golf, you know, club here to here to here to here. That ain't going to work. And if you try so hard to do it, it's going to make it worse. What's your weakest mindset? Or anything, like if you make bad pot or something, yeah. is there anything that, that becomes a demon for the rest of the round? Not really, no. Um, it's more what, what I... 
battle with at times is patience and frustration. Um, I got frustrated because a, I don't suffer. Um, I, I, I'm not a perfectionist, but I can't stand making stupid mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that that's ridiculous. That's part of golf. Uh, we all, everybody do. You make them. You got to. We all make them because yeah. we're human. We make we make mistakes, but you know that drives me mad. And you know, my patience. I run out of patience with myself because I because <laughs> I want to so bad. The only time, the only place in the world that I have patience is in the bar of a skiff. It's amazing. It's the only time I switch off. And I I've find been, that interesting because yeah. you're one of the most excitable, uh, yeah. effervescent people I know. I mean, yeah. you come in like a hurricane. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but on the bar of a skiff, you know, you're I'm chill. like, I'm like, well, I, I don't know if chill is the right word. Probably chill, but relaxed. But it's like I've got laser-like focus when on the on the bar of that skiff. It's like. I'm looking for the tip of the tail. I'm looking for a little bit of push that shouldn't be there. I'm looking just to see is that a tail? Is what is that? Is that fish coming up over there? Is that a red? Is that a red tail or is that a perma tail? Because sometimes, yeah. obviously, yeah, as yeah. we know, right. if their tail kicks up, it's, it's you can just see a little tip. Or you're fucking the worst one, a mangrove, little mangrove, and the sun hits it in the right direction. There's a bit. <laughs> oh shit! No, it's not. <laughs> well, well, not that oh, one. Yeah. But you know, just oh, yeah. it's part of it. But I just get. I get zoned in to being on the water, to just on the baronet skiff, and you know I'm a gearhead as well. I mean anything sure. that you, ah, I gotta have it. I gotta, I gotta, gotta have it. Um, Alison, my 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 wife now, she's wonderful. It, I've and going on from the, you know, from all that stuff with with Heather when she passed away, and 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 my importance was was to my two boys, Tyrone and Connor, and um, the two boys doing great now. Bless them, they're they're great kids. Tyrone's here in Palm Beach Gardens. Um, working away for an investment firm. He went to school here in Boca and Lynn. And my other boy, Connor, he's at school in Edinburgh, a place called Harry Watt. And, um, you know, getting them through a very difficult period in their sure. life and helping them try to do it, that was, that, was, that was a tough time. But then, you know, <sighs> life's not fair. I don't know. Anybody that tells you it is fair, uh, they're full of shit. Life is not fair. It's hard. Heather was 39. Yeah, it's hard. You know, there's that... Um, Oh shit! For lack of a better way of saying it, that um, line from one of the uh, Rocky movies where Stallone says, um, "You know, life ain't a bed of roses. It's gonna kick you. It's gonna punch you. It's gonna put you in the ground, and you've got to get up and you've got to fight." And you know, I try to get on with my life, and then I met Alison, this wonderful lady from home, and um, we got on like a house on fire. She had her own business back in back in Northern Ireland, but she she looked after my kids unbelievably well. After my sister had helped me out. But Alison's been a wonderful stepmom to the to the mm-hmm. kids. So she's got two of her own, but she took mine on, and and you know, has made That's them. That's awesome. And just, I've been very fortunate. So, yeah. life is it's another one of these stupid things. Life is short. Do you life think? Do you think the hardships on. make you better? I think you, if you learn from them, I think they do. Yeah, you've been through your hardships, Andy. I know, and and you know, it's it's hard. It's there's times that life just kicks you. It just is hard. Yeah, but the the true people battle through it. You have to. What are your options? Right. You, know, you know, you have to. Um, and it's, you got to look, for, I've always had something to look forward to. Look forward to, look forward to. Mm-hmm. If you're living in the past, yeah. it's a very difficult place to live. Yeah, you can't get out, and of, it's easy own, you can't to. Get out of your own way. And it's very easy to. Yeah, no, I agree. And you know, you fall into that woe is me sort of mentality. Mm-hmm. And poor me, poor me. Bullshit. Yeah. You've got to deal with what you can deal with. Right. And make tomorrow better than today. A couple of other things I want to talk to you about. Uh-huh. Uh, not only beating Tiger 4-3 uh-huh. and three at the World match, um, um, World yep. Golf Championships, what was your uh, the best night with the Claret Jug? What did you drink out of it, and where were you? Oh, Tell shit. me about that party. Oh, the shit. first night? Well, the first night. Could be the second night. Could be the third night. Could be the fourth night. <laughs> I didn't, would, I didn't would, sleep for about three nights. Um, <laughs> when you pour in there, what were you? What were you drinking you heavily? Know what? You know what? I never poured anything into the claret jug. No, I no. just didn't know. I'll no, I in. had too much respect for it. I drank. I had consumed a lot of alcohol sitting around it, but nothing actually out of it. Uh, it was one of my stupid sort of things. It's, well, it's respect. I yes, understand that. Yeah, no, that was I what it that. was. It was. Oh yeah. I yeah. just, you know. Uh, uh, I just didn't drink anything. Else. I get that. But, uh, we, but t- t- talk to me about Tiger. You you took yes. down Tiger mm-hmm. in his heyday a couple of times. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that win at the uh, World Golf Championship. So the match play. Well, there was it all started a little bit before that. But we we um, Tiger Butch Harmon 
um, was coaching Tiger, and I was working with Butch at the same time. Butch is a wonderful man, uh, one of the legendary coaches in our in our sport. But just wonderful man, and we'd spent a lot of time in Vegas um, with with Butch and Tiger was there as well, and we'd go out for for um, for dinner, and Tiger would. There's another one, cobwebs in the wallet. He would never reach for anything. So it was either Butcher or I had to get dinner every time the three of us went out. Really? So I got to know I got to know Butch and Tiger really, really well. Obviously, well, Butch, but I got to know Tiger really well from a young age. And I just hit it off with him. I just really enjoyed his company. And uh, we became very good friends over a long time. And, you know, even just nipping forward a little bit, in 2011, whenever I was winning the Open, Tiger was out with an injured knee. He was watching. He loves watching golf. And he was texting me every night saying, well, be careful. I didn't like what you did there. Brilliant over there. Be careful with that hole over there. I was watching. Everybody's being caught out of it. He was coaching he was t- Every you. night. Wow. Every night he was texting me. You know, Tiger gets a lot of bad raps. Tiger, Tiger surrounded himself by very few people um, in his head. He's, he's mellowed. He's, he, he's got a little bit softer now. But I was always fortunate. He was always very, very good to me. And uh, I enjoyed competing against him. He's, he's, he's the best in the world. Just... You, if you want to test yourself, to go against the best, and I know that's just it. And I got the chance to to play. I played practice rounds with him and all that sort of stuff. And when Tiger was dominating over here in the PGA Tour, the young kids had got no idea how good he actually was. But when he done, he was so good. He just hit shots that you just can't hit. You couldn't do it. He was so so good. But. When he was dominating, so he, he had a bit of an intimidation factor with all the guys over here. And t- oh shit, Tiger's up there again. He's in the hunt in the back. He's here he comes, chasing yeah, exactly. chasing down the leaders. Yeah, exactly. But when I played against him, I looked at it a different way. I said, I didn't give a shit. I just I want to play against the best in the world. I want to come. Okay, let me see how what I can do today. I want to go against him. I loved it. And you know, he we were playing the, that that final on the and uh, the the world match play. That was at Lacoste in two thousand. We're playing. And we're having breakfast, and I said, we're having breakfast together that morning. So I'm sitting here. So, no, Butch Harmon's sitting in the middle. Ti- no, hang on. Tiger's sitting there. I'm sitting beside Tiger. Butch Harmon's there, and Mark Steinfeld, Steinfeld is, is uh, Steiny, Steinberg's his manager sitting the other side of him. Stevie Williams is Kelly sitting the other side of him. My manager, um, Chubby Chandler, sitting beside me, and to the right of him is my caddy, Billy Foster, or J.P. Fitzgerald. And we're having breakfast at 6.30 a.m. before we go and play this 36-hole final. And the year before, Crazy. the year before, <laughs> um, Tiger's hole from the 14th, over the back of the green of 14 at the Memorial. And he's running around like this, like he's pulling a t- toilet chain or whatever. He's running around the green, all, all excited <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. And um, I said to him, I said, now listen, if you chip in today and give it one of those running around greens, I am going to punch you in the face. <laughs> At breakfast, he said this. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he looked at me, and he took me, he held his head down, and he lifted his head up, and the big white teeth came out to me, and he said, "You can fuck <laughs> off. You couldn't catch me anyway. You fat fuck." That was that was how our morning started. It was just it, it was just brilliant. Oh, but God. I had that sort of relation. I was very fortunate. One of the best guys that's ever played here, and um, we went out and played. He had a bad day. I played really well. Um, and I managed to come out on top and um, I came in afterwards, did all the press, did all that sort of stuff. And he put a note on my locker, which was the no- local rules, and it says, congrats, be proud, P.S., you're still at FF. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> quality. Just, you know, that's quality. really that's good, right? right? You know, just quality. That's you really know, good. That side of thing, people never saw that side sure. of Tiger. You know, he's a, he, was a very, he was a very kind man and still is to me. You know, so right. he's... he's, he's how about that comeback when he won the, uh, the Masters? Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. He just, he just you know, when Tiger's everybody, Tiger. Yeah, he is, right? He loves the... When you say Tiger's Tiger, mm-hmm. we all know that. Mm-hmm. But what is it about Tiger that makes him Tiger? He loves the, 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 the challenge of, dare I say it, people writing him off. You know, it's... He's always risen to a level above where very few people have ever gotten to before, and he has that ability to do it, and that in itself is. Uh, so, how do you feel special. about him now? You know, with his comeback now. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. I mean, he played well in the father son, and, yeah, his, he did. His, and Charlie's he outrageous. Did. Yeah, yeah. Do you think we'll ever see Tiger on the tour again? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I think. It, it, I think now, obviously, with his limitations, it was brilliant to see him back for a start. But with his limitations, maybe. 
you know, he'll pick and choose a few of the shorter sure. courses. It's not just the Bombers course where, they're going, where you need to hit a 320. You might see him do that. And then, you know, he's only about four years away from joining us old guys and riding in the cart and playing competitive <laughs> right. golf. So that, 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 we'll yeah. see. I don't know. We'll see. One, one more golf question about yes. Tiger. Tiger, because it's hard yeah. not to speak yeah, yeah. with you, not only about your career, but uh, possibly the greatest golfer of all time. Yes. Yep. Jack, yep. Tiger, well, how know, do you rank him? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> I feel as if I'm st- sitting with Jack and Tiger right now. So, you know, that's my sort of, that's my, but in, in, in your words, you know. This Dusty, is, this did is, you hear that? But this, is, this is, this is, this is, this is your one. You know, Tom Evans, all that sort of character, you boys, you know. You're too kind. But, you know, um, how do you rate them? At the moment, it's a, that's a really hard call, but Jack's won more majors. Our, our, careers are defined by majors right. really that's what they are that's what we've all um that's what we strive we've strived to achieve through all our career and you can win whatever you want but unless you win the big ones that's you're good mm-hmm. that's, that's, what, that's the way it is we're judged and that's that's how you can so if you judge on that level um you know you've always got to say jack you've got to say it, it's him but you know and i i didn't get the opportunity to play with jack um I think I might have played with him once. I, can't remember. I don't know if I played with Jack or not, but I played a lot of golf with Tiger. And I saw up hand how close, uh, close hand and up close, how good he actually was. And he just, and it looked so good. Everything was so good. And he was mentally unbelievable. What's the sound like of his compression? There is no sound. So we're playing a tournament many, many years ago in Europe, the uh, Deutsche Bank, um, TPC of Europe. And we're playing in Germany. And Germany at that stage had a the law for insecticides on the golf course and what have you was very limited. So they couldn't present a pristine golf course. The golf course was great, don't get me wrong. But they couldn't get the turf firm and tight like they do because there were limitations of what they could use on the ground. Mm-hmm. So Tiggy's come over and he's come to play in the tournament. He's walked up on the range beside me. He always used to come and find me if I was in the range first. Because he would walk up and he'd say, ah, double F, how you doing? And blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. <laughs> so he put his bag down there. And I have never seen this since. And I will never, ever see it again. The turf was damp and wet and soft. Okay. He hit, went through his whole bag of irons, pured every shot, and took a di- a, like a dinner plate size of grass. And it was brushed. There was no brown mud. Wow. No, di- no divot. No divot. And he pured every one. Now, that's hard to explain how he's just absolutely pured every golf ball. It went that way. Took no divot. And it was the size of a dinner plate. And the grass was brushed flat. As if somebody's put their foot and gone flat. Now, for your viewers or listeners or whatever doing that, I can't tell you how unbelievable that is. For somebody to hit whatever he hit 80 iron shots, 90 iron shots, wedges through low Wedges through lower longer, ones. Yes. And the grass was just brushed. Did you just wow. stand back and watch? Yeah. yeah. In amazement. Yeah, yeah. I think I was messing with him. I said, you're going to fudge one short. Or you're going to duff one. You're going to do one. <laughs> sure everything. Do you, mean, do you ever just... think, how, how, do you, how do you fucking beat this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course you do. But you it's do. the challenge. But you did. Yeah, it's the challenge. What's your greatest success? My kids. Besides your kids? We all say our kids. Yeah, because I have my kids. My greatest success beside my kid. Um, and overcoming your, your wife's yeah, passing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I try to treat people the way they treat me. That's what I try to do. And I try to give back a little bit if I can through my foundation and different bits and pieces. And the game has been very good to me. And I will never forget the game has been very good to me. So I try and give a little bit back. Mom. My greatest success was probably a shot that I made at a permit, a four permit. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. Hang on. More, you like so, that? So I gotta more. ask you boys. I gotta no, no, this is a good so, one. So obviously fishing is more important than golf. Oh yeah. At this stage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, I just I'm so into it. I love my golf. Listen. I love it. I'm sixty I'm fifty three years old, still playing professional sport. I mean, there's not many other sports you can still do that. I know some people say the Champions Tour is not this, it's not that. Let me tell you, Ernie Els is still playing 
uh, Jim Furyk's playing, Bernard Langer's playing, BJ Singh's playing. We've got great Hall of Famers playing our sport, trying to win every week. So if you're beating them now and again, you're doing okay. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm down at Sandy Point, Patrick's in the bow. We spotted um, three fish in the back of a rape going away. So it's about, oh, I don't know. It's a down, it's an 11 o'clock shot. Down off the left. And the fish, the ray, is about, oh, I'd say, 85 foot away. So I've got there, and, I'm, and Patrick says, you're going to have to take a shot. Off the, they're going away. Okay, okay, okay. Down off the left. So I pick it. I'm so throw it out there. I'm back up again. And I launch it. I just launch it a little bit high. Comes right. Lands like a butterfly. Lands. The fly line lands six foot behind the three permit. The leader just goes like that in front of the ray. Two strips onto the ray. Fish on. Landed the fish. <laughs> I mean, just, just one of those... I'm not that good. I just gotta put. I just gotta say, you know, I'm not that good. But that making shots like that, you guys can probably you can remember your shots. But you know, yeah, once in a while, that, there's something yeah. that really stands yeah. out. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But your passion for fishing, especially permit, mm -hmm. uh, is almost insurmountable. I mean, I see uh, how obsessed. excited you get over I'm, permit. I'm just upset. What is it about that fish that that drives you so insanely uh, passionate? <sighs> I don't know. The elusiveness, maybe? The beauty? The hunt. It's a hunt. It's not fishing, mm -hmm. you know, isn't it? It's, it's, you got to hunt these fish. you got to find them. You know, tarpon and bonefish are different, with all due respect. Bonefish, I don't even bring any weight on that. I just got I, I done that, been there. Too easy. That. So, I have, so my, my fishing dreams so we say our goal or whatever something if i was to do something that i wanted to do that i set myself a target i want to land a double digit bonefish done that i want to land a 40 pound plus permit biggest one i've had so far was my first one on the 16th of march 2016 which was a, a 38 pound permit that was my but i've thrown it bigger ones i have thrown a 50 pound permit haven't got one yet, but I've thrown at them. I want to land one over 40. And the hardest one, which I may have to go somewhere, I don't know where I'm going to go to. I want one of those. That's in the same above your garage out there. Oh, want, the 202. I, I, want, I want the two. You want a big one? I want one. a two. Really? I want a two. Dude. That's more my so, thing. More so than a 40-pound permit? That's a hard one. <laughs> oh, what do you think, Dustin? Which one's the way? Which one? They're both. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, they're both just, I mean, that's. Unicorns, aren't yeah, they? They're yeah, unicorns. I couldn't, I couldn't pick one either. It's, I guess you'd have to go, I don't know. I guess you can still catch a 200-pound tarpon up, maybe up Costa in the Rica, Panhandle. You, 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 Gabon. Or to Gabon to, yeah. to Africa. Yeah. I mean, that's, if it's, if it's safe enough to go there. Yeah. But that's, yeah, but. But I think uh, this is a pretty valid question, too, to you, Dustin, in that I know your passion and, and the love of passion for golf. Do you ever find it uh, imbalance? Like, I might want to go play golf a little bit more than I want to go fishing? You know, first of all, I can't believe I'm sitting here with, with Darren Clark. <laughs> Let me say that. I'm just... I'm pitching I, myself. I'm, to both oh, no, no, no. It's, it's crazy. I'm humbled that, that, no. that he, and he, and he, that asked he you mentioned... And you that, Yeah, my name. So, oh, listen. The funny, so, one of the funniest... Stories, I'll interject just for a second. One of the funniest stories that you boys were talking about was whenever you're going, you're going to fish in the Dale Brown or something and the weather's kind of shitty and it's the day before and the weather's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you boys are going the other day, your dad, legend of legends, going down there. He's going out. I can't remember who he was fishing or whatever. Charlie Cosby. Yeah, yeah. And he stopped you guys on the side of the road. He said, um, where are you going? Oh, we're not going out there. We're going golf. And your dad looks at you and says, fuck, I wish I played golf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, just brilliant. That's right. Brilliant. Uh, that I'm is, glad you remembered that because oh, yeah. I was going to bring that story Oh, just up. brilliant. Just it's brilliant. Cold as hell, nasty, yeah. cloudy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. last thing you want to do is go permit fishing. Oh, man, for sure. And when you, like when you say, do I have a, a hard time choosing between, like, if I, you know, fishing and playing golf, like, I've been playing golf since about 96, and in the golf course I play at, a little golf course in Marathon. I always used to plan to play the club championship, which was the last two weekends of February. So I would hold off so I could play in that. And it was that was a real. That's what got my blood flowing okay. because I'm 
not that good at it, but I was trying to <laughs> trying to win. Sure. You know. Did and, you win it? Have you won it? Yeah, I won it five times. Good man. But, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but that 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 being said, like once I hang up the golf clubs, I hang them and don't like if even if I had the chance to play after that, I would be focused on the fishing and what like I, I put them away and I don't play again usually until August or September. Over. You know. Here's a question for you, so. Dustin, because as a golfer and as a fisherman, you're you're making that cast and you're hitting that shot. Do you find any aggravation being a guide and having to rely on on your angler to win that tournament? Don't you sometimes think, fuck, I wish I was in the front seat throwing that thing? No, I don't. Believe it or not, I don't. Oh. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that way at all. No, I, I don't. I mean, it's, it's. You're a giving the, human being. Well, yeah, well, the truth is, I mean, I, I might not be able to, to make it my, either. You know what I mean? I don't ever try. I don't ever think that way. I just, I, I think of it as a, a team thing exclusively mm-hmm. and, and just, just try and make it happen from my end, you know? Right. That's all. Yeah. I because, don't. Because in, in golf, um, it's a little bit different than in fishing. Mm-hmm. Your caddy on a golf course is not having to find the hole that you've got to uh, sink that putt yeah. on. He's yeah. just helping you with the information. Yes. Whereas in fishing, I think a bigger part of the job and a more difficult part of the job in winning tournaments is the guide's ability to find the fish. Because the more fish be. you find, be. the, be- the better yeah, chance getting, I have of catching them. And getting the boat in the right spot to be able to have the best chance of catching them. You know what I mean? That's the hard part, particularly on the ocean. As 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 you all know, it when you're when you're out there and it's the weather's shitty and you're chasing a big school of fish and you're pulling and and trying to get in front of a school that might have gotten by you or something like that, knowing that if you get there, you're going to catch one. I mean, that's a big part of it. You know, yeah. that's a big part of it. Getting the boat where it needs to be. Mm. Look at his and, arms. And, oh and, no, no, I know, I know, I know. Well, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, that you don't have those arms. In, that boat doesn't go anywhere. Well, staying no. in shape to, to to try and do good in that tournaments is it 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 ultimately <laughs> helps me live better. You know who's, what I mean? Just, who's, who's the big Rob for us? His oh arms. I God. mean, he's just ridiculous. Oh, he's massive. Oh, yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna drink too much, you want a buddy booth you. He would be the guy on a bad night. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but that's got to be just that's part of a team as well. You right. boys know you fish together and stuff. But in a tournament, you need to know that. If you don't get the boat in the right place, your angler can still make a shot, which is going to be a tough shot, oh, but he yeah. can still get the fly in, in the play, isn't it? Yeah, that's got to be sure. that's got to be your oh, competition. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And what like in golf, it's is it is it a team? Is it considered a team yeah. with the caddy? Yes, or? it is because if they do their homework, they yeah, really get it into helps their you home, win. Right? You know exactly what's what, and you know if there's a flying up there and and say you're playing in greeny greens and you're you're land say the flags of 184 and your landings num landing numbers are 186 or sorry if the flags are 184 and your landing number is 176 you need to know if that ball is landing in the patch of soft, area of right. soft or wow. down grain or into the grain because the ball is going to react differently mm-hmm. so we know approximately where the flags are going to be but Caddies are also looking where the green is in that hole. Because so they got notes on every hole. Everything. About, yeah, everything. That's and, and that's just, it's preparation. I mean, for everything, preparation is, if you want to be successful, preparation is everything. And that's what we have to have to do. Same for you guys. That's why you go out scouting. That's why you know where the fish are. Excuse me. And, and trying to find them then. I love that that's adage, fail to prepare, you oh, prepare yeah. to fail. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and right. that's just pathetic. That's, what's the point? It's, unless you put the effort into it, you ain't going to get anything. Now, golf is a sport where um, Pete Khan, um, old coach, used to tell me, and he lives by it, he said, you put not, you put 100% in, 90% of the time, you ain't going to get anything out. You're going to get 10% of what you put in. You put 100% in, you get 10% back. Wow, that's interesting. Golf. Yeah, that is. That's golf. Yeah. And, but fishing's different. So golf, if you don't lift your golf clubs for three, four months, and you go out and try and hit some, oh, shit, you're going to, you're, you're going to have a couple of funky sort of moves. You lift a fly rod, not so much in your boy's scenarios, but you lift a fry rod. Usually you start casting the where you left off at the level you were before within, I don't know, maybe five or ten minutes. It's right. not like a it's right. not like trying to hit the golf ball. Mm-hmm. That takes a little bit longer. And you know I'm an amateur. I'm just you know, I just love it. I'm obsessed with that. 
I don't know what I am. I'd be maybe a, a two or a three handicapper or throwing a fly rod. So I, I can sort of, it's, my casting action is somewhat agricultural, but it gets the job done. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's sort of, you know, it sort of gets there. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, I get the fly yeah. in the right place most of the time. Well, take a look at a lot of those golf swings, like Chi, yeah. like Chi Chi Rodriguez and yeah. Raymond Floyd. Yeah. It's not pretty. Yeah. Furic. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But they, you get it, the job done. But it, but it works, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's, the most important thing in fishing as an angler is dexterity mm -hmm. you've got to be able to get the flight of the fish regardless of where that fish is yeah, yeah, both yeah. sides yeah yeah of you course know. yeah yeah of course now with you what is your biggest um question as to what does it take to successfully catch permit because you're asking oh, me gosh, and there's yeah, a great question this, yeah. uh, to dustin you know is it the fly or the action yeah, uh, exactly. how how do you put the fly in the water? Exactly. And, Please and tell a, me. <laughs> there's a bunch of different scenarios. Like you know, like a lot of times, you know, if you if you cast that fly with a sidearm cast, yes. that fly's coming in sideways. Yes. So it's not going to turn over yes. that hard. Exactly. Right. Um, but if you've got a wind pumping into you, you got to go over from from from. If you've got a wind pumping into you from sixty feet over here or, or whatever, but if you've got an option, the wind's coming in and the fish is over there. You're not going to lift it here. You're going to go side cast. You, sometimes right. that option is taken away from yeah. you. Yeah, but you know, going side to get yeah. it out there. But the question to you, Dusty, is obviously you had to read all the elements. But for the most part, I think your father said it best: permit are not fair. They're not no. honest fish. Oh. Yeah, that's the thing. Oh. So to catch them, you just have to. We all know that you're not going to get a million shots, right? Just getting it where it needs to be as as often as you can it just increases your odds so it's just the first cast has to be right and most people get intimidated to even throw at them you know oh, i love you, it yeah oh, i love it yeah i mean a lot of people cast you know you cast 10 feet from then you cast five and then yes. you know what i mean yeah. and then, then by then it's then over, gone right yeah yeah, yeah. Then, then, yeah then they get used to it when they start it and then they figure out what these fish are but you're not afraid I, to throw right at yeah. them that's how you catch them yeah in my opinion you got to get yeah. it in there where they can see it and and then you catch them, you know. In this day and age, I see more people uh, becoming more and more successful uh, through waiting for a permit. Yeah. Is that like the the newfound go-to approach? It is, yeah. I mean, like forever, you know, I fished along with my dad, who obviously helped me a ton. Del Brown kind of helped put me on the – the map is a guide early because he he fished with me a lot you know and we we did well together but is it true let me just uh, you brought up dale brown i was going to ask you this anyway is it true that he got most of his fish his permit within 50 foot of the boat he waited until he got to 50 feet is that true or is that just a wives tale sort of thing no that's probably true he waited he yeah, waited and waited. He, waited. So, yeah and having said that that goes back to andy's question he was a lot of his fish were conditions dependent because yes. he did do that. He he was a real good caster, wasn't afraid to throw it at him, and and usually waited till he knew he could get it there the first time. That's, yes. the, that's the big mistake a lot of people make is they yeah. try early, they don't get it anywhere near him, and then they're gone, and then you're going, what happened? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. exactly. So, yeah, he, he, would, he would wait and, and, until he knew he could make the cast, and when it was calm out, we were fucked. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because yeah. get so close. But because no, he wasn't going to wade. Yes, and not many people were wading then anyway. I had just a handful of permit caught back in those days with people getting like three, with people getting out of the boat that uh -huh. still wanted to do it even though it was calm. Because when it was calm, we would usually go tarpon fishing. You know, so 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 when you made the transition from the American to the strong arm. Are you throwing strong arms all the time? Are you still? Are you? Are you throwing spawn and shrimps out there? What are you? What are you throwing? Are you? What, I know uh, everybody's box. I don't know. Darren, I'm bringing bringing it. This is the question. I mean, I mean, just, I mean I'm, I'm, if you're throwing a strong arm, are you? If they don't eat it in the drop, do you move? Do you move it gently? You, obviously, you can't move it quickly because it's a crab. You're not supposed to move it that quick. But a spawning shrimp, you can throw it at them and just rip it back and see if they come off it. Mm -hmm. See, see if the fish reacts or it doesn't look. So he, what do you do? So here's, I'll, I'll give you a little history of what I know about how the permit flies have progressed. Yes. So Dell, for most of his career, used a, a standard Merkin yeah. Yeah, feather yeah. splayed yes. out. Yes, yes, yes. Relied on the sink rate. 
to get them to jump on it. That's mm-hmm. why we were always throwing it right close to them early because mm-hmm. they seeing it on the initial sink was mm-hmm. like the best yes, thing to happen. Yes. So they more and more people started fishing for permit while Dell was still fishing for them. Everybody was throwing the merkin. My dad and I had a contest to develop a fly other than the merkin. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and just to see whose would work better. And there's a flat down off Key West that in the fall, they get on it and they mud like crazy and they look mm-hmm. like raised mud out there. There's okay. no rays, but, and yeah. they, and I don't know what quite what they're eating, but they quit, they weren't eating the Merkin well. So that's kind of what prompted that, that little competition mm-hmm. we had. So he tied a fly that he called a Claude, which was basically a Merkin, just like a strong arm is basically a Merkin. Mm-hmm. He had claws with a rubber band out the back with a couple eyes out the at, behind the hook you know and the claws were facing away as the fly was stripped i came out with a fly that i'll, I'll show you i actually got you a couple of experimentals oh, that i don't yeah. know oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> i don't know oh, wait to use oh, i haven't, I I haven't used them i, I haven't used them yet so i can't vouch for them okay. but it's well, the it, next it comes, 40 pounder i put it in front of and it gives me the middle finger i will be i'll let you, you know can blame it on, <laughs> well you can blame it on me if they don't bite it but maybe but anyway so i i tied a fly that where the crab it was situated with the claw going out the bend and one that, that was kind of like this going out the uh-huh. off the eye, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, yeah. and I later took this one off completely because it impeded the sink rate. Okay. And and the thing was like, they loved it. Oh, they yeah, it was Candy. a real deal. I'll show you. I've got one in my box, and I'll show you what it looks. What yeah. I've got one that's not a great version of mm-hmm. it, but so Dell caught most of his permit later on on that fly, okay. like for the last few years. Okay. And, and my dad used it, and it mm-hmm. was just really successful. Mm-hmm. And it's – if you've ever seen a fly that – I don't even know what they call it, but um, I think it's tied with that Puglisi claw yes. and some chenille legs. It was similar to that, but it was all rubber bands, and, okay. and it worked really well. Having said that, it worked for a time. I mm-hmm. thought I've cracked the code on these things a million times. <laughs> and it never, <laughs> but I've caught a, I've caught a shitload yes. of on shrimp. Yeah, on shrimp. Yeah, you would go. And I so, don't the, the strong arm. I've caught a couple on. Yeah. Everybody's using You'd it, so shrimp. I so I don't. You know, I think too it might yeah. trigger the jack part of the yes. family of of, yeah. a, of a permit when you yeah. get that fly here and you start. You yeah. Know. Well, like you said, yeah, that, you can strip it. You can get away yeah. with stripping. Yeah, that one. The, the story that I, that I told you earlier over there. You know, I'm fishing last year. Um, a game with black fly with uh, Julian Clinton. Patrick's got me over, and um, I've got this permit in the back of a ray. It won't eat. I've changed three, four flies to it. It will not eat, and it won't spook off the ray. And it's like, oh, what's going on here? And eventually, one of those times, it did run out of pen. Said, oh, fuck this. So I put a floating crab on, <laughs> threw it past it, and stripped it as fast as I could, like a popper. And I've got this, like it's almost like a bow wave I've got coming off that, <laughs> after this fly. And this permit was just came almost right out of the water twice charging that fly that's the jack isn't it that is yes, the jack sure. yeah, yeah. absolutely he missed it twice but anyway and then off it off it spooked off after that we spent maybe i don't know 45 minutes at this fish that wouldn't leave the ray just putting different flies on have you fished in the lower keys for permit i fished i was very lucky a couple of years ago I went with um a guide who i'm fishing with up in bradenton now i've got me 18 days of tarpon because i can because i'm still playing competitively i can only fish in between my tournaments sure so i can't go for like a month do tom evans <laughs> go to homo yeah. do or do our two months or whatever i do billy pitt going up there doing all that sort of stuff but um i go what was i gonna say there i thought i was going out of my head have I fished with the kids? Yes. So the guy, one of the, the the guy up there, Greg Peterson, is my guide up in Britain to Junk Kit. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He knows Justin Ray really well. So we went down, we we oh, chased Permit, we oh, chased awesome. Permit a couple of times with Justin. Uh, what a great guy! Oh, I mean, yeah. just, Super guy. just brilliant. And we were chasing Permit with him a couple of times, and it was one of the. So whenever I go out and fish for Permit um, down in, in Abaco, it's like a we have a little system if there's two of us in the front tough to fish for permit with two people because you never know when you're going to get the shot when you're not so we have a little system i put my iphone on 15 minutes 15 minutes you're on the bow 15 mm-hmm. minutes you sit down regardless uh, of shots no um Unless if you, you get hit. a shot and you met you sit down 
if the guide is pushing towards a ray within your or, or a permit within your 15 minutes, you stay on the bar. That's your fish. Mm -hmm. But 15 minutes. So then it's not you're not like sitting there the whole mm -hmm. time. And that, and that's fine. That's a good. So system. we're down right. there with right. 15 minutes. Yeah. And iPhone. That's the thing. Right. Get your ass down. It's my turn. I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's we were fishing down with with Justin. And it was one of those sort of things. Greg had nine shots. I had fucking none. It was, you know, that's yeah. just, but right. that's permit fishing. That's the, that's the way it goes. But we had a great time with, with Justin. And I'm on the bar and Justin points out some bonefish oh, coming coming at me from one o'clock or whatever. And I go, he says, bonefish, one, I'll throw it and cast out there. And my rod tip comes around to the, keep your rod tip pointing at the bonefish. I said, fuck the bonefish. I don't want, I've got no interest. I'm not here for bonefish. <laughs> he was laughing. And stuff. I had no interest catching the bonefish. Just none. I just don't. Have I any. love your passion. Just I don't have no interest for it whatsoever. Um, but just a note. That's what I fished. That's the really weird time. A one time, many many years. I can't remember who I was, was fishing with, but a long long time ago. But just now, had a really really good time. And um, you know, he he had a playlist on the boat that um, I got on Spotify. I still have it. It's fucking one of the best playlist fishing playlists that I've ever listened. What to. kind of music do you like? To listen oh, to? all sorts of shit. Everything. But you've got a lot of Bono and and you oh, yeah, too. You too. Yeah, Singing yeah. about Bloody Sunday. Yeah, you know, all, the big all sorts of problems stuff. with the yeah, Protestants and the stuff. Catholics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In Ireland, exactly. You know, I grew up and. Um, we were from a very middle of the road family, but my parents gave me everything they could do to support me going around playing and, and all of the world. You know, I'm traveling around the world since I've been 13, 14 year old playing golf tournaments. And um, um, over one of the winters there, I got a job in a local nightclub. And um, my job was setting up the bars and making sure it was ready for when it was open. I was just, the, you know, the guy tidying up and doing all that sort of stuff. And I was in one evening from, I know, in at six o'clock, say doors open at 8.30. Uh, setting up the bar. This was before we had buttons. Remember, do you guys remember the little mixers, the little bottles sure. and all that sort of stuff? Just making sure everything's stuck. So doors open at 8.30, 9 o'clock, we get a phone call, bomb scare, everybody out. So the place was quite a few people in already, blah, blah, blah. And um, so they get like, whatever, I don't know how many people, 700 people, 800 people, get out. And uh, we're all out and half an hour later, bomb goes off, blows the place to smithereens. It's flattened. It's it's Holy no shit. more. It's done. Blah, how blah, blah. How old were you at this time? I was, how was it? 18? And then um, the, uh, as I subsequently found out, the bomb was from me to that wall away from, oh, from like shit. four o'clock that afternoon, could have went off at any stage. Holy crap. But yeah, that was life in Northern Ireland. That was, that was part of the whole sort of thing. It was a, you know, you had to have your wits about you when you were growing up in it. But I was fortunate because my golf, um, I got pretty good at it at a young age. So I was, I, I got to see outside of all the reasons of everything that was going on. So. Because of that I was very, very lucky. So all right. that sort of stuff is just ugh. right. I just I couldn't wait to get <laughs> just get away from it all. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I, but, I, can, I can't even imagine. You know, growing no. up in that environment. It was difficult, but a lot of people did, I and mean, a lot yeah. of people suffered because of it. And right. uh, you know, it was a it was a bad place for a long time. It's a wonderful place now. I it's, mean, it's just okay Belfast now. is just rocking. You know, restaurants and bars and Michelin. It's just, it's just brilliant. Just right. great night. It's just oh, that's so that's, far that's from great, what it was. They come so far. Let's go back to permit. Uh -huh. um, I would say, listening to your conversation and the state of uh, permit, successful permit fishing uh -huh. is where it is now. Yes. If I wanted to target permit mm -hmm. solely and exclusively, I think I personally would probably try to throw shrimp flies yes. and bring the jack out of permit yes. instead of relying on crabs and relying on the permit to eat that crab. You know, you boys have you invited me, but you, you boys you, have invited me to come on the come on here today and have a chat, which is brilliant. And I'm so excited to be sitting talking to you guys about it. But I got so many of these questions that I yeah. want to ask you, and one of them was, you know. Would I feel more comfortable throwing a spawning shrimp and stripping it a little bit quicker than throwing a crab and not moving it so fast? Me? I'll throw a spawning shrimp all day long. That's what I'm trying. Yeah, exactly. And that was a question I was going to ask you guys. And just keep it moving. Because if you move, how sad am I? You know, go on to YouTube and watch to see how a crab actually goes to the ground whenever a predator's chasing it down. It doesn't go. It goes down there and puts its, puts mm -hmm. its claws up, doesn't it? Well, a shrimp mm -hmm. gets his ass out of the way. It doesn't back, want to be eaten. Backs up, right. yeah. which makes it look natural yes. stripping it, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. But that's how... <laughs> it's just everything. It's just, I mean, I mean, I'm just pathetic. You know, 
me this pink pink cigar. I go full pink on it, just just to see, you know, if that's going to make any difference. You know, I go mono and then the pink, and then and then I go back to regular cigar blue label, and just all clear fluoro, <laughs> and fucking make my loops a bit bigger, make my loops a little smaller, and it's just pathetic, you know. And I'm out on them. Before I go out fishing, before I go anywhere, I have got my leader out there and I've got my whatever what, when I've made my leader and I'm pulling it so hard on my little fish eye that I got out in the deck to make sure I want to do everything I possibly can that if that fish eats the fly, I've got I've done my bit. So yeah. if I have any operator error, that's gonna piss me off. <laughs> but if the fish if the if the fish don't eat, that's Yeah, okay. you're off the hook. What but can a, you do? a spawning yeah. shrimp, throwing at them, moving it. That's my. I have a thing. feeling you don't sleep very well the night before I just, day of no, fishing. No, no, I don't. And you, know, I make pra- I'm, I'm, I make Patrick um, when we go fishing. I make his lunch, so I make him three. I cook the chicken. I make all these spicy wraps. It's about fifteen ingredients. In it. So I make him his lunch and everything before we go out. So I'm fully yetied up before we go on the boat. <laughs> yetied I mean, up. I'm there fully yetied up with all the stuff, making him his lunch, and then we're out. And right, Patrick, what are we doing? I sort of so it's like thirty minute drive from from the club down to. Um, down to the ramp and um, get down and think, I'm thinking, okay, where are the tides? I'm checking the tides the night before. Uh, moon's working. Okay, it was this way. Oh, shit. So that tide, where's it coming from? Yeah, east moving south. <laughs> we're not going to go there, but we'll go here. And, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's just, where are we going to find it? Where are we going to find it? And then it all goes to shit because they step, in, step on, the, <laughs> on the boat and right, Patrick, where are we going? So I got all these <laughs> yeah. these ideas as just as the guy, as the dickhead in the front of the boat, <laughs> whereas Patrick is the captain and he he sort of decides where we're going to go because it's, permit are so tidal, aren't they? Oh, you know, man. tarpon, yeah. if you're on the beach and you're on the hook and you find the line with the tarpon, come, they're going to come there. Yeah. You can't yeah. go on the hook for permits. You, no, you got to no. go hunting them. You got to go find them. You got to, and then you got to find them. And then you got to find the stupid hungry one. And you, you, I mean, they just, they drive you mad. <laughs> and, then, and then you throw it out there and, 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 you, and you land, it just goes like it flops down. And, if the angle changes and you can't quite see where the fly is, then you're, just, you're doing this, you're waiting for it, you're waiting for anything, <coughs> any little sensation, just, has he got it, has he got it, has he got it? So how many, how many eats do you think you miss from a perm, taking it and spitting it? Do you think I it happens a lot? I personally think they're not eating it a lot of the time. Okay. Because there's another That's, trainer's there's another trainer's thought that they eat it and spit it blah blah. Isn't I it? think they can do that pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah, and I that's think right. you do miss. So if some, you lose if you lose touch with, but that. I think you generally, like you said, you're so so trying to feel them oh, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. intent yeah. on feeling them that yeah. you almost you usually do feel them. I think you when know I, what I mean. When I started off and I lost so many at the start, whenever I started all the permanent stuff and I did, it was all operator error. It was just I was just making stupid mistakes. You know, my line management was poor. Everything was just poor. And I must have, I don't know how many fish I lost, 15 fish I must have lost, and just straightening hooks and got the line around my finger and just all sorts of just stupid shit, standing on the line and all that sort of mm-hmm. And now, I don't know what you boys do or whatever, but now if I have a, if I have a eat, if I get a fish and I, and I have it and I have an eat, I rip that into it as hard as I possibly can because I'm going to lose the fish there and then or I'm going to have a better chance of getting that fish to the boat. Right. So I just rip it into it as hard as I can. Maybe you boys be a little bit more gentle than I am. But, well, you usually know. like if, if, I, if, if I think one's got it, we uh-huh. usually say kind of strip long. Yes. Like not necessarily super hard, but yeah, yeah. kind of slide it long and a little faster than your average strip yeah, yeah. just to see if they have it. Yeah, yeah. And if they don't, you don't. You don't totally freak them with a really hard yeah, strip, and know. also yeah. too, yeah. <laughs> get in there, <laughs> and, and that might be a good way to do it because My, either yeah. they have it or they don't, and yeah. and odds of them coming and biting it again are probably pretty yeah. Oh, slim they're anyway. not they're, they're gone. If they, <laughs> listen, if they feel any little bit, they ain't coming back to have a look at it nah. again. No matter how good you're, well, we'll see with your flies. But we'll see. Nah, who knows? Those, it, it probably won't make any difference. Y- y- here's here's something that was a real key point for me because before we fished the permit uh, Del Brown event. I'd caught a number of fish, but uh, not a lot, and I didn't uh-huh. I didn't target them that often. And I called, uh, I was talking to Doug Kilpatrick, and he's yes. won the Dale Brown a number of times. I said, Doug, what is the biggest key as an angler uh, feeding that fish? What is the body, what is the body language that that fish tells mm-hmm. me that he's eating that fly? Mm-hmm. He said, look, a lot of times a permit will tip up on it, yes. yeah, yeah. and they're looking at it. Yeah, yeah. 
But he said, wait until that tail shakes like this. A little quiver. Well, quiver. Somebody, somebody needs to tell these fucking abaco permit the same thing because they tail up, they quiver, they do everything, get their asses out of the water, and they still don't eat. Nothing. Still Nothing. don't eat. What are they? They're, 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 just, they're coming like this. What do you say about what, what do you think <sighs> that is, Dustin? Because <sighs> I'm thinking well, you, you, when no. that tail goes like this, he's pinned it. That's when you. That's when you. That's what I thought it. too. You remember what my dad said? He said they're pressing it into the mud with their eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Who knows uh, what they're doing? But uh, I mean, so many times you swear they've got it. Yeah. And you strip it, and they come on it again, and you swear they've got it again, and you swear they've got it three times, and then they finally got it. Yeah. But who knows? I don't know. know. The first stage is when it said a free swimmer, or whatever. It breaks off the red. Say it's on a red. Breaks off the red. It comes and it has a look. And how's it look? So you're still you're stripping, 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 and then it starts getting a little bit quicker and quicker, doesn't it? You know, if it's chasing the thing. In the meantime, you're thinking, "Fuck, he's getting too close to the boat. Getting too close to the boat. Am I going to move it? No, no, I just got to keep going." And then it goes like this: tail's going, tail's going, tail's going. You're still trying to strip. You're still staying tight with it. Blah blah blah. Still stripping it. Okay, next time. And you're now whatever, forty feet from the boat or whatever. Fucking fish goes. So. What am I doing wrong? Come on, tell us other frustrated just, permit guys that are out there that are <laughs> watching this. Tell, t- they're just what? a they're just a pain in the ass. Oh. That's the. I don't think there's. I mean, that's just their nature. That's what they do. They fuck with you. Yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I try. I try everything. You know, I watch every. I watch you boys. I listen to you. I do everything. And these fucking fish. My last fish. My last permit was the tenth of February last year. And I've fished, I think, approximately, with being able to, 52 days for permit since that last fish. Wow. I'm obsessed with them. I mean, it's just... Yeah, you are. I'm, I'm pathetic. It's just... <laughs> just that's that's it's, a lot of doing. I mean, oh, I just, that's a dedicated He's, angler oh, right no, there. I'm just upset. You got the bug. Every day, I've got the fever bad. But Ooh. every day when I'm driving down or whatever, I think, this could be the day. Because right. could, I'm... Thrown a fifty pound fish before down there. I really have. You know, black fly black fly down there in Abaco, June and Clint, bless them, they're really good. They look after mm-hmm. me and they get me out in the water whenever they can. They're full, but they get me out in the water. And um you know, they fit me in and I get out there and I'm half an hour I'm ready to go. Jay, in case I have a cancellation, I'm ready to go. I'm off I go and I get in <laughs> and I'm going down I'm going out fishing and I'm going out and I'm going, right, okay, well, weather, weather, weather to do all the stuff that I said about <laughs> And then fish, and then you're in the bar of the boat, and you're standing there. And you're staring holes in the water, trying to put fish on there. And I guess about 12 o'clock, if you haven't seen one, then every bit of bottom's turned into the tip of a tail. And <laughs> we've all been there, haven't we? We've all, we've all been there. And you just want something to happen, and you throw it out there, and you, you, you get one, you throw it out there, and you throw a good cast on. It's in that hula hoop in front of the fish's eyes. They've got to see it. And then they just turn around. I mean, it's just, it's just trying. <laughs> he to reminds me of me when oh, I first started tarpon oh, fishing. Oh, I couldn't sleep. Oh, I'm the same. Yeah. I'm just ridiculous. I'm just so possessed. Uh, yeah, I'm so. Uh, there's no answer to them, is there? There's no, no you know, no. as you say, they're not an honest fish. Yeah. You know? Well, you know what's a great interview about about the evolution of permit fishing mm-hmm. is the very first interview we did uh, with your dad. Oh no! I've watched uh, it. And listen, oh no! Oh, it, I've watched it more it, than it, once. It, I mean, isn't that oh, yeah. conversation awesome oh, yeah. about oh, learning brilliant. about the brilliant. about the merkin fly and, and the evolution of weight and yes. all that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, can't yeah. even imagine how exciting that was when all of a sudden there was yeah. nobody permit fishing yes. in west of Key West. Yeah. They're getting sixty shots a day, and then they yeah. start figuring out how to catch the things. Now they're yeah. catching five and six fish a day. Oh no! I know. But what what kind know. of fishing do you have in in all Abaco? Is uh, it good fishing? Do you have a number it of used shots? To be, prior to prior to Dorian, a um, couple of years ago, you know, a standard day going out there would be maybe I don't know nine shots at big. But we don't have we don't have small permit down there. We really, the, the, like a small permit down there would be oh twenty pounds would be a small permit. I know that's a decent that's a decent that's a permit the keys, down yeah. the keys. Sure. But that's yeah, a I mean, smallish. They have progressively gotten smaller okay. in the keys. When I first started. Uh-huh. When I first started, I would see in a in a in a like in the month of March, I may see uh-huh. twenty permit okay that are thirty plus yeah thirty five okay. plus, and now I see two a year. Yeah. Well, why do you think uh, that is? Yeah. Too much pressure. People fishing for man. Them? I don't know. I wish I knew. I, you know, I watched the bonefish kind of go away in the keys, and in my 
short time of, of uh-huh. being out there. They they were everywhere when I was a kid, tailing big ones. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know there was a such thing as a six pound bonefish mm-hmm. when I was a kid. To now, that's a big one mm-hmm. down there. And since that that cold spell in 2010, the fishing was really good. After that, uh-huh. 2012 was still good. 13, and it's it's progressively tapered off since yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't know why. Just like nobody for certain knows why the bonefish kind of went the way they did. You know, yeah. so you know the BTT is doing all this research and everything, trying to figure it trying all out, to figure and tagging it out. the fish. And, but you know, I don't know. Are the sharks eating all the ones that they tag? <laughs> Whatever you know, there's just maybe we haven't had a long enough time for them to actually get the answers coming back again. But Certainly down in Abaco, it used to be nine nine shots would be like a standard day out there, sometimes way more. And now? And now, um, recently, if you get three, four shots, that's that's wow. a pretty day. But I'm prepared. I don't, you, I don't care. You get the patience of a saint. Oh, You're in it for that. I'm happy. To, uh, no, well, I wouldn't say I'm happy. Listen, any angler that tells you they want to go and stand and do what we do and not catch a fish is full of shit. Right. I want to mm-hmm. go and catch a fish. But I am also understand the game that that's not always going to be. you gotta, you got to put your time in. The more time you put in the bar, the more chance you've got to get in the fish because sure. that's just the way it works. Mm-hmm. There is no shortcuts. The key it's the same as golf. So you, the more time you put into it, you get something out. But if you don't put the time in, it ain't going to happen. Did you move to the Bahamas specifically because of no. permit? No, no. We moved to the Bahamas and in, in, um, didn't move to the Bahamas. We never actually, I'm still a UK tax resident, so but we spent a lot of time down right. there in Abaco. Um, but the club opened in, the Abaco Club in Wiley Bay opened in 2004. We bought in March 2005. And prior to that, you know, I've been a trout guy and um, started off pike many years ago as a young kid riding my bicycle. Thrown on a treble hook, lumps of bacon, a bit of weight on there, just wait for a big pike to come and get it, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. And that was that was a bit of fun. And then got into uh, in the trout, so I would fish in a um, on a river um, down in the south of England, chalk stream. Um, on the River Test, a very famous chalk get river. Get the fuck out of here! Oh yeah, I had a dream last night. You're gonna, this is going to freak you out. <laughs> I was telling these guys earlier. Last night, I had a dream that you and I were fishing on the test. No fucking way. I, no way. On my fucking life. Have you fished the test yes, before? Yes, I have fished it. Who did you fish so, with? So, uh, Where let, did you let fish? Let me go back to my story real quick. Yeah, yeah, go on. So all my fly boxes, uh-huh. all of a sudden, all my flies were alive. <laughs> and my trout flies were These alive, and they're crawling out of my fucking pockets, and I'm losing all my bugs. And you're catching all these big fish, and I'm pissed because all my flies are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I had two rods every Monday on the test with, um, I fished two places. One was a guy called Anna Mann. The other one was Roger Waters' house, Pink Floyd. Oh, right. Roger has a beautiful stretch down do you, there. Have house. you fished with Roger? Yeah, yeah. On the yeah. Test? yeah. yeah Roger's a wonderful man. Yeah. Terribly far back, Roger. You don't think Pink Floyd, you know, he's legend and all that sort of stuff. But you wouldn't think. Roger's a really, really nice man. Um, but anyway, we used to go down there in the test. So I had... The, the 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 beach just above Roger's house uh, was this place called Alan Mann's. Uh, he owned the property, and I had about a mile and a half of double bank uh, fishing, and that was my Monday. Keith Maxwell was the pro at Sunningdale, had been there for thirty years. He got me into all of so that. So you lived nearby. I lived about an hour and a half away, and I would drive down there every Monday, go on to the on to the river and just walk up and down the river throwing a flies and may fly duffers fortnight when they flew and they just. They get it. It didn't make any difference. What you did, you get an eight, right. and um, get into that. My biggest one I pulled out of there, out of there was a fourteen pound brownie. I wow! Out. I had a thing. I've got a cast of it back home. Oh, That's a right. big. It's almost like a oh, salmon. Yeah. And then after that, we used to go right after the Open Championship every year. We would we would go up to um, to Scotland. So Lee Westwood, myself, and my manager Chubby Chandler, we had this friend called Stephen Bowler, and he would send his plane. And he would pick us up wherever we we were playing the open. Would land up in Inverness and he had a, a helicopter SK seventy six Sikorsky. He would put the helicopter there and then fly us up to the estate on the Helmsdale. We always used to fish the Helmsdale for wow. salmon, and we would go on there. So we'd get up, would fish the morning rise from maybe five o'clock until about seven thirty. We'd come and have a little bit of breakfast. We'd go in, um, jump in the jump in the helicopter. Go and play a Nairn, Skibo, Broer, the golf courses there. Do that. Come back, a bit of food back in the river again for the salmon for the evening rides. And stuff. And we had that for <laughs> <That's>, four days. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good life. That was bro. that was a, that was very special. And then we bought the house in Abaco in in, in two thousand and five. And I got all these salmon rods, and as I said, I'm a gearhead. Got all the salmon rods, and I got 
uh, all my trout rods and everything sitting back home in Ireland. They will never be touched again. As soon as it went into salt, never going back. Do no you, interest. Absolutely no interest going back to crazy. fresh water. No, there, there is no fresh water fish that would... Sorry, that's a lie. There's two, which I haven't done yet. Golden Dorado, Arapaima. But Arapaima sounds as if you've got to really struggle, really, you know, you got to put it out there. you you, you got to... A lot, yeah. of, a lot of false casting. But, yeah, but a lot of living in shitty conditions for a while to get at them as yeah. well because you're yeah. in the middle of the jungle. Sure. Well, maybe, maybe a, you're a not a bug whatever. guy. Not a bug guy. I don't, or, or, Golden Dorado and those ones. But the rest of it, I have no interest. I've even, you know... It's just I had the whole thing about the tug is the drug, isn't it? Leslie Holmes, who's my, <laughs> he's my, uh, he's from Holman in in Northern Ireland, and he moved. He's one of the, one of the most decorated casting instructors in the world. And he moved from Ireland to uh, Boca Grande, so Leslie's moved over there, and his good buddy over there, a guy called Captain Skipsink, he's the other guy that I go fishing with whenever we go up there. Great guys, just brilliant. First time I'm out going with them, going fishing for tarpon. Les, he's, man, he's taught me and all that sort of stuff. We're out fishing for tarpon and we're coming up and we're one of the bars down there in Boca in the back and there's a let up fish there. There's a let up maybe about a 120 let up and we've got, we've got maybe about a 40 feet, 50 feet shot into off the right. Wind's blowing pretty strong and I can't get the fly there. I am fucking so angry. I, this is my first day ever tarpon fishing. <laughs> I am so angry. And I just can't get it there. And I've had a couple of shots that day at fish or whatever. I can't get it. I fuck it. I left there. And I promised myself, I said, okay, you either stop this right now or you work your ass off to, to make sure you can put that fly where you need to put it 99% of the time. And that's what I did. Was that the first time, that was you, my first time. you saltwater fished? That, no. No, I'm coming back to that. That was my first, first tarpon. tarpon. Okay. That, was my, that was oh, uh, maybe about 214 or whatever. Something like that was my first tarpon one. To 13 maybe but but when it was coming back to we moved to we didn't move to Amico we bought our house in 2005 sure. and then um, obviously I'd done my trout the sort of mm-hmm. trout and salmon and all that sort of stuff and bonefish ah bonefish 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 right beside us Cherokee Sound is down there so um, that first summer I got the, the guy there Donny Lowe started taking me down going to Cherokee so I go out for one day. I said, uh, "Okay, one other day, one other day, one other day, one other day." <laughs> I mean, I just didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was buying those tapered straight leaders and shit. Couldn't tie any knots. Couldn't do. No idea. Yeah. Just tying a straight on the fly straight on with just a regular cinch knot and all that sort of carry on. Just throwing them down there, and the bonefish would eat and all that sort of stuff. And then start seeing a couple of big ones. Messed up the cast. Oh shit! Better I start getting a little bit better and did all that sort of stuff. And that was it. As soon as I got into salt. Just that was it done. No interest. Just no, just no interest going back to trout, salmon. And I know it's wonderful, steelhead, beautiful. I've been in the river throwing double handers and all. No. Salt, Once you get into salt. the fire, <laughs> into the salt, you're into the fire. You're gonna hook a fish that's got nowhere to go. It's in the ocean. Yeah. It ain't gonna go under a bank. It's not gonna go. It's in the ocean. What are they gonna do? You just hold on. They have just, big motors too. Just big motors and just. Don't be a dick. Don't trout set. Fucking keep that below your waist. <laughs> How often do you see that? Well, you know that punter that comes to the front of the boat? I'm that guy. You know, they're coming from Montana or something. To try to, yeah, I'm a, what, is, what did June say? She said, yes, I'm an avid, I'm a avid trout angler. That's not what you want to tell your or guy when you get the boat. That's yeah. just not. Because the next thing they come out with a lanyard around their neck with a little dry pan and all that. Oh, no, this is not happening. You know, you see them. And then you put them on a fish up there. <laughs> Disaster, yeah. But you know, the bonefish, bonefish, great. But I, I, I caught all of those, and that was the end of it. And it was good. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. The the bones were great, and I got into all my gear. And but then, permit permit changed everything. How do everything? You, how does the permit compare with tarpon, or the tarpon compare yeah. with permit? Well, do you still have the same affection for tarpon. I don't think I so. I think no, no. I think my affection for tarpon's growing. I do because you just haven't done it enough. Maybe I haven't done enough. But the reason why I say it's going, growing, is because, as you've just said, there are more honest fish than what those are. Yeah. Here's yeah. the beauty. Here's the beauty of a tarpon. He wants to be caught. Well. You can t- you can speak to this fish. Yeah, he you wants put, to eat. More than he a permit. He wants to eat it. More than a permit. Oh, oh, uh-huh. oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You, can, you, you, put, you put the fly in the right spot with this fish. Mm-hmm. 
and you allow that gap to close before yes. bringing the fly too close to the boat. But yeah. you, you allow that fish to close the gap uh, without moving the fly very far. Uh -huh. And you start tapping. He goes, oh, yeah. I like that. You tap again. He goes, oh, okay. And he, one more little slide maybe, cracks yeah. his mouth. He gets all cross-eyed and yeah. boom. Clares the gills. They, they want to dance. Yeah. And that's that's why I like this fish. Yeah. They want to play the game. Yeah. Look. Oh, no. Per, you, per, you didn't catch that on a worm. You, you guys, you're using a lot of worms these days down in the game. You have to. You? Yeah, you have to. Yeah, Unfortunately, changed, you have to. That, 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 looking up there, that's not a worm. <laughs> you know? No, no. I mean, they're they're catchable on other stuff still, yeah. but it's but worms. It's so gotten that, harder that's for the sure. I caught that fish with. Wow. And that and so that's like a uh <laughs> yeah, feel all this, this yeah, yeah, scraping yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So we're fishing in the mud. Um so you'd have to have a fly that they can see real yes. well. So the worm flies are all the wow. on the ocean, but um wow. that's the difference because with a permit and a bonefish, you can feed them, mm -hmm. but you don't see their mouth, you don't see their face as nearly as well as True. you do a tarpon, because a tarpon's looking up. You can see that you can see the permit. Well, not bottom white lip. If you're in the right conditions, sure. you can see that bottom lip. You can see them right. go. You can, but it's not often enough. Right. But you can see them. Yeah. <laughs> but this fish is looking up. Yes. And the fly's above him. Yes. So we're looking down. So we're looking right down at the throat of this fish when yeah. he bites. And yeah, yeah. that to me, I mean, the last fish I ever catch, I would love to catch that fish waiting mm -hmm. to a monster bonefish tailing or a big permit tailing because. That is such an organic setting. Yes. There's no boat. There's no conversation. Yes. It's you and the, and the yes. air, the yes. breeze, and the fish. Yes. True. That, yeah. I that's that. or, yeah. so organic. I love that. Yeah. But, you know, obviously the last 40 years, I, you know, that thing's driven me crazy. And, yeah. You know, a couple of divorces later, and here we are. I know, but you've done well. You've done well <laughs> with that thing. You've, you've done, you've you got to say, you we, both have. We, you, we, you, we had a nice dance, this fish and I. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a proper way. I, you know, one of the other times as well, just diversify and I'll come back to this I went to Baja I was doing a, a corporate day um, for MasterCard I believe out there and I'm going to Baja and I know it's coming up so I'm thinking okay rooster fish I want to go do roosters <laughs> so I'm fortunate running down the man all that sort of stuff as I told you it's amazing what you're watching in whatever hotel room that's at 2 something 30 I'd in the like morning. to see you running down the man correct 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 <laughs> I, I was gonna get you just fucking stole my line there T tiger, I don't know why. tiger yeah, and yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. tiger and I you're running down the you. line you're running down the man I've seen this shit and fell out of the okay right I'm gonna go do this so one of the original guys out there talked to Grant Hartman he was one of the guys that started all that I, I know face. who he is so yeah. Grant so go out there so I'm there, I've got four days fishing, two days in the back of a panga where they tease them up a little bit, and then the other two days on the beach with Grant himself. The other pangas is part of his operations. You can catch some roosters, some decent sized roosters, but this one. They're jacks That's as well. Yeah, sure. They, they'll give you a good they'll give you a good tug. But then they've got sea lions there to come and eat them and shit. And then you're trying to you loosen the drag, you let them run with the sea lions again. Whatever. Anyway, landed a couple of them great fun. So I think, okay, right, right, I'm okay for this. Next two days we're on the beach. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, I think, okay, there's going to be all right. I can throw it and all that sort of stuff. So we're going down the beach. And I don't know if you've seen any of this sort of stuff, but you've got like 30 foot of line out behind you. You've got a fly that's about giant. this size, the giant thing. So you're supposed to run along when you see this rooster coming in, tacking the bait fish. Run along, fucking launch this fly like this with 30 foot of fly line, a wet fly and everything. Dragging out of the water. Out of the sand. With, out of the sand, with the wind coming in at you from fucking 20 miles an hour from the right. Well, fuck, if I didn't hit my head, I hit my ass. I mean, just, oh, it was the most difficult, just brutal. So eventually, I tried the first day and I since took patient with it and then. I hit my head once too often. And those things are sore when they hit the head with the size of those fucking flies. <laughs> the next day, it was blowing as well. And uh, I just said, fuck, Grant, you carry on. I'll just sit and I just watched him doing it. And he fucking rolling down, chucking it out there and all that sort of stuff. But it was um, it was brilliant because when we're down, like you got to run to see them or get there quickly or yeah. see when the bait, bait fish, the bait balls are coming in. And we're gone, I don't know, 80 yards further down the beach looking for one or whatever. And we just look back. And this like eighty pound rooster has almost beats itself on the fish trying to get pound, a bed. Wow. Just a huge big rooster. It wasn't there when we were walking that sure. way. And there was no chance I was running back. <laughs> but you know, just amazing sight. But it's getting back to what we were saying about the tarpon, I'm so excited about my eighteen days that I've got. Yeah. Um, you know, going there up to, to Bradenton with Greg and then so I've got three 
uh, six day trips. So in between tournaments, when I have nice. weeks off uh, in the season, that I'll go, um, I go in. I fish Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with Greg up in, in Bradenton, and that's Pine Islands up there, and a yeah, few few different mm-hmm. places, and. Um, and then the next three days down in uh, Boca Grande with Captain Skip Zink and, and Leslie right after that. So three, six days and then back on tour. And awesome. I've got April, May and June. April's going to be uh, mostly led up fish up there and Brenton in the back and um, throwing at some of the some of the big girls. Big ones, yeah. So that'll, that'll, yeah. I'm just so excited about it because, <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, the permit thing, I'm just, I'm obsessed with the permit. But getting back to your point, you got a better chance of getting one of these to eat at the moment. But landing, getting a permit to eat and landing that fish, I mean, it's just a... If that's what I do 90% of the time, actually getting one to the boat is such a sense of it's achievement. Really, yeah. yeah. It really I mean, is. That's the, that's the, it's hard, man. It's, hard, it's the holy grail, isn't it? It's really mm-hmm. the holy grail. But it's... They're just beautiful. They're fucking horrible. They, they're just... They're everything. <laughs> they're just... <laughs> But if you do it, it's hard to explain. You know, I, when I'm playing for WAMS and the guys ask me, what are you talking about? Or what do you do when you're not playing golf? I can't reach my phone. Permit, permit, permit. <laughs> That's what you did when yeah, I yeah, met yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Permit, <laughs> permit, permit. I said, well, well, I said, well, well what's that? Oh, I said, oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's uh, what it is. Well, listen, guys, yeah. uh, it, 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 I cannot tell you... Um, how honored Nikki and oh, I are to no, have you. It's my in honor home. being. It's my honor and, being and, on here. And, and Dusty, and me to you be know. here sitting here with with Darren. It's like I still can't. I won't. No. It, I'll, I'll keep pinching myself. No, it's the yeah, other way. It's, 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 it, no, it's the it's the other way. But I just you boys are you boys are legends of of what I just the the in golf when you play, you know the way you've got that soft hands and all that sort of stuff. When I get a fly rod in the hand, it's like you just. I, you try and learn, and, I, and I, I'm a sponge for information. Sometimes in my golf, I've gone too much information that gets mm-hmm. logged up here. But with my, my fishing, I've watched everything you've ever put on. I've watched everything about you. I've watched everything about your dad. I've watched everything, <laughs> of, like Lords of the Fly. I mean, I've read the book. I've read it again. I've read it again. read it again. It's just everything oh, it's about so... it. Just that thing. And there's not many of us that actually do the salt, what the pursuit of it. It's a small it. number. It's, it's a, a small, small world, small family. It's a small family. Yeah. But when you do it, and you get it, you know, I'm the lucky one to sit with you boys. That's no, we're just, so, that, that's, we are, that's no, let me tell is. you, I, I'm pinching myself. Like uh, I said, I had a dream last night that you and I are on the test. That's unbelievable. That is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> right. So look, we're going to go play some golf. Yes, we are. You know, uh, I cannot wait for this afternoon. Yeah, and we'll, I'll, you know what? Let's have some fun. I'll bring a fly rod. And after we play golf, we'll throw a fly on, on the range a little bit before you depart. Oh, that would be wonderful. Wouldn't that be good? That I mean, would be we'll, we'll hang there for yeah. 15 minutes. I'm a bit a of a flight. creeper. If I can get my wrist a little bit too much. I think you know, we all that's, are. Okay, so, um, oh, Reg F, Tim. Tim's come down there. And Timmy owns Echo, blah, blah, blah. Timmy's come down. I'll just finish off with this. And we're going down there, and Timmy's world long dive, and his brother Steve won more, but Tim mm. Tim won it as well. Right. Tim hasn't fished an awful lot in the salt and more up in everything else. But anyway, he comes down, and Timmy's on the front. He's giving me a couple of lessons in the bay there at the club, and Abaco Club. Fine, so we go out in the boat. So we go over to Moors Island. Patrick's on the back, Tim and I on the front. Tim's up. First, we get in the first pancake flat there, just East End Bush over at Moors Island. Tailing permit, 60 foot away. Good tail proper tail and it's a it's not like a shallow eat it's a full proper. blow proper i mean you can just slap that down onto so the difference between a, a permit tailing this way and a t- permit tailing that way Big slap difference. slap the thing because that thing's he's, digging he's on it so right tim you're up get out of he's ready it's your shoot well fuck he lines this permit by about 15 foot and i'm sitting at the boat Yes! If I, <laughs> if I got one of the best casters in the world, I'm going to line this fish. He just fucked it up, I'm too. Fuck, I'm set. This, I'm going to have an unbelievable day. <laughs> That's perfect fish. Oh, That's just the, way it, just the way it is. It is. But, well, I love your enthusiasm. Oh, you it. are a superstar yeah, in all it. of our hearts around the world. Thank you, Andy. And like I said, we feel so blessed and privileged yeah. and honored to have you well here. maybe maybe the three of us will get together or four of us get together down at black flight some say down abaco and come chasing those fuckers with me down there and show me what i'm doing i've heard a lot about that wrong. place lately You'll just look, by way of some buddies in, yeah. in marathon there yeah. a guy named greg smith and, yes. and joe day hut yes a, a buddy of mine from seven mile fly shop yeah he was there last week well, no well, one he, well he went he went down there and was supposed to fish with somebody else uh-huh. and, and didn't hook up with him and and, yeah. and this my buddy greg called clint and uh-huh. clint 
was super super nice to him and brought him in there and he, yeah. he got to fish when yeah he was he was, he was no, looking I, at like I he might he not so he, he he loved it yeah loved black, it. black fly is wonderful i mean it's just it's so special it's just everything about it is is wonderful but um because they're so full now it's referral only that's the way that they I've are heard that. Right. so i got a message i'm sitting down in abaco last week got a message from gary nicholas i know gary because sure. gary and i play golf together he plays a little bit in champs biggest sandbagger on the planet oh yeah so gary gary sends me he says darn i need a bit of a favor from you so um he said dad and i want to go down and fish down black flag but i put on the website and it's referral only i said okay leave it with me let me see what i can do so I get the phone, and I know what Clint's going to do. So I've sent Clint this message. Clint, Gary Nicholas and his dad, Jack Nicholas, want to come fish at Blackby. I hereby vouch for them both and refer them for your consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Nicholas. Oh, you, Excellent. Because you know, Jack's obviously a big saltwater guy sure. as well and all that sort of guy. But, you know, it's a small world, but it's a – this saltwater stuff, it's very small – but this, I've met a lot of great people in this saltwater world. It's wonderful. It's very sure. special. Well, give me golf or fishing. Give me this. Thank you so Not much. Not at all. Thank you. So much. Thank you for awesome. having me. Thanks for Thank you, Dustin. Dusty. Thanks, Joe. Wonderful. Love you guys. Just brilliant. Love it. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Not at all. Fucking perfect. When I saw it's best side story, when I saw it's just a rap.